Yes, people, it's your boy A Dazzle here again with Wrestle Extra. Um, Wrestle Extra number five, we're going for it. Um, so I'm here, of course, as always, with my boy uh, Mex, the WrestleManiac himself. What are you saying? How you been? I'm good, bro. Nice to be back for another week of wrestling. I've got a lot to talk about, a couple interesting topics. I think there's a couple of dreamers topics in today's show that, like we say, we can only dream about, but I guess we'll get around <laughs> to it. <laughs> but I for hope sure, everyone's sure. been, been having a good week and yeah, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, man, let's go for it, bro. Um, so the first thing we want to talk about is something that, you know, I think we're, we're definitely both excited about. We are both definitely excited about um, the possibilities to us seem endless, but we know we watch a show and a company that <laughs> have a few ceilings. Um, but let's get into the excitement of um, the current push for um, both Big E and Keith Lee. Let, let's jump in to Big E first, um, because that one kind of started first really yeah yep. so biggie of course from the new day the, the the powerhouse of of the of the trio and with now kofi kingston is injured short term xavier woods a bit more long term but could be coming back in the next few months big e is now currently on his own doing things by himself and it's been you know very much publicized that he is now on his own and we've seen him on a bit of a run. I think it's been four weeks now. Um, something he's, like he's that. He's been winning yeah. matches, something like that. And obviously, he's just won his, his last match with Sheamus at Payback. How 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 are you seeing this whole thing um, either play out, or how how has it been for you so far? It's been good. Um, I do think the start of it has been a bit tame, but you know, I'm happy to let them kind of build it up slowly mm. especially if fingers crossed they're planning a big coronation at Wrestlemania next year <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy for it to start off at this speed um, I'm just kind of thinking you know well just so you know Kofi's six weeks of being on the shelf as he said is up so mm -hmm. it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to that do if they're actually going to give him maybe some time off and keep him off TV or um, mm -hmm. are they going to get back involved. Um, absolutely loving the passion that Big E is showing after the wins, especially this last one at Payback, you know, telling Corey Graves, tell them about me, preach to them about me, like I'm coming, I'm on right. my way. You know, it's right, really right, right. like, um, it kind of harps back to, if you remember early New Day and that kind of gospel kind of um, yeah, yeah, yeah. gimmick they were going for. Um, but yeah, Biggie, you know, I don't think anyone's doubted that he was ever going to deliver when the time was right. My only thing is now that because they have spotlighted the fact that Biggie's on a singles run and all of that kind of stuff, you know, you guys have to follow through. <laughs> like, I, 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 it'll be interesting to have some stumbles along the road and, you know, of oh, are, are they going to do it and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, but. Yeah, they, they really have to follow through. I mean, they can't disappoint with this one. I mean, we'll get on to Keith Lee. Nothing is promised with Keith Lee, although things are looking promising with him. Mm -hmm. But with Biggie, they have almost slightly promised that something is going to happen. So Right, 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 right. Yeah. So, so what's interesting, again, you, you mentioned the passion thing as well. Um, and we've seen um, on Talking Smack... And in um, a few backstage interviews, but more talking smack is obviously a, a little bit more, you know, um, shoot than it is kayfabe. Yeah. Um, for those that don't know, shoot being real, kayfabe being the... the um, In the WWE bubble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the scripted, kayfabe being scripted, yeah. um, shoot being real life. Um, Biggie's been very passionate about his run and about how he's going to approach it as well. What I've liked is now I've I've been I've been one of those guys that have, that that have said the whole you know Biggie needs to be a little bit maybe needs to be a little bit more serious likewise all that kind of I've been that guy I've mm -hmm. been that guy and I a part of me still says that a part mm -hmm. of me still still feels that 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 be the case but after hearing the passion in in Biggie's voice um, in what he's saying and how he wants to approach his singles run um, and this current one I'm a little bit more like okay you know what. Do it your way and, and, and let's see how it plays out. 
Um, he he mentioned that obviously he's been doing the you know goofing around and he's the Joker and he and he can do you know he's so talented he can do either one very easily and and we've seen him kind of jump in between the two as well with this which I think definitely works I yeah, think it definitely yeah. works and I think that's going to be the thing that's going to push him forward um, so yeah it's it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out where they go with it as you said. You know, they've publicised it that it's going to be some big thing, and they're, they're turning it into this big thing. And I'm just like, okay, so <laughs> is it? Um, but at the same time, I don't, I don't, I definitely don't want to see it being, you know, by next week or in even by, you know, by the end of September that he's got a championship. Yeah. I would rather see that that slow build, you know, a bit more of a run, a storied run into him becoming even if it's IC champion yeah, even if yeah. it's, even if the first thing is the Intercontinental Championship let it make sense not just okay this is Big E we all know Big E we're going to push him boom next week he's IC champion yeah, let's not yeah, do the Roman Reigns thing <laughs> <laughs> let's not do the Roman Reigns thing you know what I mean and and just throw it on him the second he's available um, I'd rather see a push I'd rather see a, a slow build sorry um, which makes sense, which gives him, you know, I guess what I've, I feel is deserved for, you know, at least three years now. Definitely, yeah. At least three years. Mm-hmm. So, and and right now, um, yeah, I know you mentioned Kofi's coming back, but right now he's the only, um, he's the only active black male wrestler on SmackDown. No. What? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe so. Well, to be fair, there's not like loads anyway. There's so. not. They're all on Raw. Yeah, that's true. There is quite in, a few in, on Raw. In, they're all on Raw in the same story and mm. meeting up with, you know what I mean? <laughs> like about true, nine yeah. of them. You know what I mean? And then you've just got The New Day and Biggie. It's true, you know. Mm. So, yeah. So, right now, uh, all eyes on SmackDown. <laughs> yeah, 100. <laughs> because it's, it, it, it's real right now. It's real. It's real. Um, uh, I was watching the um, the kickoff show for Payback, um, mm-hmm. and Booker T was there with um, someone else. I think as well said it that you know this whole serious thing of Biggie and mm-hmm. JBL just turned around and said, "You became six time world champion in WWE wearing a king's crown, a cape, and doing a spinner Rooney." So it basically, who are you to tell someone right, to be right, serious, right, right. sort of thing? Right. Which very I felt true. was was very good. Not a lot of you know JBL doesn't have a lot of fans, but I think he won over quite a few people <laughs> <laughs> with that with that statement. To be honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that was very true. With Biggie, I wouldn't mind seeing like I don't know, maybe in the next couple of months, he maybe got a title shot and lost, mm-hmm. just to add okay. some complexity to the story. That yeah, you know, same way he's not getting it straight away. You know, he's mm-hmm. he's gonna keep winning because he's on a bit of a run now. He works his way maybe into a number one contendership. Comes, yeah. I mean, by maybe by then Roman as well will be on some type of monster heel run, and he just mm. kind of dispatches of Big E, and it's like, oh, well, Big E's got to start all over again, sort of thing. And even maybe that road to starting over again might be a win at the Rumble. I don't know. Am I pushing my luck? But it, 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 I, I'm, something for like, me. For me, that for me would make a lot of sense. Uh, Big E winning the Rumble. Because he's, he's, you know, there's 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 two ways it's gone for Big E when it comes to the Royal Rumble. Mm. Um, we've had the Big E that kind of teared, teared up the place and, you know, had a few, a good few eliminations and stuff like that in terms of numbers. Yeah. Then we had that one year, not last year's one, but uh, I think it was 2018, where he was knocked out within you know seconds and that was a big massive thing yeah um yeah that was poor i remember that that was <laughs> that was heartbreaking and that yeah. was a big that was a big issue as well then um this year kind of was a little bit slightly disappointing um in the sense we wanted to see him last a little bit longer maybe he was the one that would that would um eliminate brock who had that like that long run of eliminating 15 people or whatever yeah, before and stuff like that yeah. um but I think it would make sense for Big E to win the Rumble. It, it it would just make sense to me. 
it, I, I think that's probably um, maybe I'm, I'm getting a little bit too hopeful now. It's not. It's now not going to happen because for me that would just make complete sense. He he wins the rumble and then goes on to WrestleMania and then that's where he wins the chat. You know what? It's, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> that sounds way too good. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like usually, anyway, SmackDown people never seem to win the Rumble. It's always won by someone yeah, as Raw, weird. and then yeah, SmackDown yeah. come through like the Elimination Chamber way. I don't know. Yeah. That's um, true. I mean, we do have a dr- uh, draft coming up some sometime soon, so maybe that mm-hmm. could rejig some things. But I mean, I'm just remembering now the pop of when McIntyre eliminated Brock Lesnar. And I'm thinking, if Big E is to win the Rumble, the roof will go off the... Obviously, given that fans are back in the building, like, the roof will actually go off the place because Big E has a different kind of popularity. You know, major, I think people liked McIntyre and were getting behind him at that time. He had got a couple of wins on Raw before the Rumble. But it's the, it's the whole thing of eliminating Lesnar as well. And especially, like you say, how Lesnar was just cleaning house before McIntyre came in. If mm-hmm. if Biggie Biggie doesn't even have to do one of those mad ones like you know go start at number one and go all the way through, but Mm-mm. if he if he won, I'm sure like that is enough confirmation for WWE to know this is the right guy to put the belt on. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Yeah, I, I think the only hope, uh, the only bit of it the, of that little scenario and story, and him going on to WrestleMania, mm. the only part of it that seems. Um, like it's not going to happen just because it, it's a re- not a repeat yeah a repeat of Kofi in terms of winning at Wrestlemania will they do that okay. again uh, I don't know I, I mean to be honest I'm, I'm yeah it, it's still that kind of it, it's not set in stone that he's going to win um, the championship by then you know what I mean it may, yeah, it may take yeah. longer it might even be shorter who knows who knows yeah. but we'll see um it's interesting. Obviously, we mentioned Roman. Roman Reigns has come back. We can't talk and, and not mention that. Of course, we mentioned it last week, but he's now Universal Champion champion again. Um, and there's this little bit of a, you know, bit of a heel turn. It's kind of, is he a heel? Is he a face? Is he trying to do this? You know what I mean? So with them pushing Big E as clearly a face, um, will them two, you know what I mean, kind of, you know, clash the Collision course, yeah. Will that happen? That match would be amazing. Yeah. That match would be amazing. I think they could hype that very well, um, given the time and, and the correct effort. So, yeah, Biggie, I think I'm excited for what they do. I'm excited for what they do. But we'll, I'm still apprehensive all at the same time. I'm all apprehensive time. because it's WWE. But right. I think right. we're getting, we're going to get a, a world championship run from him. I mm. think it is a question of when or should it be sooner rather than later is it going to be so- I think at the very latest it will be Wrestlemania mm-hmm. um, maybe the Rumble if they also want to differ it a bit from from um, Kofi's like you're saying maybe mm-hmm. he wins it at the Rumble I don't know but mm-hmm. I can only imagine if he wins it at the Rumble he may drop it you drop it before, before WrestleMania, WrestleMania to, for something from other story, which yeah, isn't yeah, yeah. isn't gonna is not good enough for me, you, anyone else. Not <laughs> so all. not at all. Yeah, I mean to be honest, I mean, well, I guess we'll get on to Keith Lee now. I feel there's mm-hmm. more promise in seeing a world championship within the next year for Big E than Keith Lee, despite Keith Lee's okay. initial start on Raw looking really good. Right, right, right. So it's been documented. Um you know, in the last few days that apparently Vince wants to, and the words were used, push um, Keith Lee to the moon. Mm. And um, Randy Orton was um, was told, was directed to kind of make Keith Lee like a star, like a star in, their, yeah. in their match of payback. Um, and I think he did that. He, he definitely did that. Keith Lee obviously um, beat Randy Orton, which is massive... I think possibly the biggest, well, apart from Roman Reigns, of course, the biggest story from Payback. Yeah. Um, the biggest heel in the company. Like, beat him in under 10 minutes. For sure. For sure. And completely clean. Super yeah. clean. Not an, a, a distraction. Not Nothing. a low blow somewhere. Not the referee Nothing. got knocked over and just straight. Mm. Boom. Spirit bomb. One, two, three. Over. I was, <laughs> I was, I'm still shocked now. <laughs> I'm still shocked now you know what I mean I'm just like did that actually happen so it's going to be very interesting to see what they do there um, obviously 
Keith Lee was in a triple threat match with Randy Orton and Seth Rollins yesterday on Raw. Um, he didn't get the win. Some people will look at that and, be, you know, we, we get and some fans who are, who are a little bit, you know, mm. um, upset very easily. Mm. And they'll be like, oh, how can he win yesterday? And then he lost you know, the, the next <laughs> night. It, it's neither here nor there for me, if I'm completely honest. He was in the match. It looked amazing. Um, and it was Randy Orton being very opportunistic as well. So it wasn't, you know, Keith Lee wasn't pinned as well. Yeah, I so, think that's very telling. The fact that Randy Orton definitely. put the RKO on him, jumped over him, and went and went for Seth Rollins. Like I've so. never seen Randy do that ever. Yeah, it's as if him. Say, it's as if he's saying, "Well, my RKO isn't as strong as your spirit bomb." So you know, you laid him out five, ten seconds ago. I'm going to RKO you, but I'm still going to pin him because he's still right. down. So right, right, it's right. still so it's that's... still good for Keith Lee, like you're saying. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. And he beat um, Dolph Ziggler earlier in the night, in able to be in that triple threat match as well. So that you know, irked me. Is... Let me just say, okay, because go on, how, go on, go how on. do you beat Randy Orton in under ten minutes? But like, you have a very competitive match against Dolph Ziggler. Come because on, because Dolph man. Ziggler is the best. Come <laughs> on, come on. No, but that's just me. Um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Um, he, w- he won at the end of the day. That's all that matters, he won, I guess. But he won, yeah. and he's now beaten two former world champions so in the space TV. of two nights. You know what I mean? And took on Seth Rollins as well. Had him beat. Let's be real. He yeah. had him beat as well. Another great world champion um, in recent years. So it's looking promising for Keith Lee. Very, very promising for Definitely. Keith Lee. Um, I'm always, I'm always. Um, I think I've already found my my word of of the day, which is apprehensive. I'm already <laughs> apprehensive about how quickly it's be it's, it's happening, or how high it is right now, because sometimes you get so high there's, there's nowhere else to go. Mm-hmm. That's the fear. So it's gonna it's probably won't last long. It's only it's only at, down from there. Yeah, or well, it takes a little bit longer to then build them back up. You look at guys like Kevin Owens. Sheamus, um, and there's been others in the past. He probably aren't mm. even in WWE anymore. Um, mm. Dolph Ziggler's another one, actually. Jack Swagger, you know what I mean? Um, he went up there and then just depleted very quickly. So that's a fear, but at the same time, um, I'm happy to currently wi- ride the wave um, of of the Keithley push right now. Um, I'm liking it. Yeah, there's the, the, there's those little things that we don't like at the moment. The music, the attire. It is what it is. Um, mm. We won't we won't speak on it too much. Don't need to change that music though. <laughs> need to change that music real quick. It's just the mix. The mix from the bask in the glory to this new thing is just come on, like yeah, 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 yeah. No yeah. one there has is. And I know we can't. Oh well, a lot of people say we shouldn't make too much of it. And obviously, Keith Lee himself um, was vocal on Twitter about it as well. About you know, don't worry about that part and all that type of thing. But. I saw someone else um, mention that whole thing of don't worry about the music and it's not that serious and da da da. But when you think mm. to yourself of some of these iconic wrestlers, the, some of the most popular wrestlers, they've had great bro. music. It matters. As soon as you hear that glass shatter, Stone Cold. As as bro, I can break. I can break a glass in my kitchen, and I'm looking for Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it matters. There's no if you smell, you know, it matters. It right. absolutely it matters. matters. It matters. It matters. And and you know, you you hear that first. Do, 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 do. You think you know me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bam. It matters. It matters. It matters. And I know Keith Lee's got that little bask in the glory bit at the start. I think yeah, that's yeah, the saving yeah. grace. We know to what be it honest. is. That's it's, it's the safe. Yeah, it is. It is. But then to go into. It is, te- it is just bad musicality, to be honest. It is just bad musicality, to be honest. It really is. But that is that. Um, was, was there any other things on Raw that you noticed? Um, um, I mean, I just just one I mean, last thing on Keith Lee and that whole... I yeah, mean, I was, yeah. I was watching the triple threat match. Obviously, he progressed into the triple threat match against Seth Rollins and Randy Orton, like you said. And I literally got flashbacks of um, Finn Balor's call up, and literally how in that one night or two, or was it over two weeks? They literally propelled yeah, yeah, Finn yeah, Balor yeah. to the moon, yeah, to yeah, the yeah. to the main event right. of SummerSlam, like for the Universal right. Championship. And I thought, are they going to do this exact same thing with Keith Lee, mm. and he's going to defeat McIntyre at, at Clash of Champions? 
obviously that's not the case now. So of course, of course. it's going to be interesting to see where he goes from here because you know he's he's not now in that title scene anymore. So um, and I'm and I'm glad he's not. If I'm honest, mm. as I said, you know that that whole push too quick is and never really plays out right in the long yeah. term, at least. Um, so I'm glad he's not necessarily in that match. Um, but he's still up there. It's going to be interesting to see, to see where he now goes now that that's happened. Whether anything with Randy Orton continues or something else. What, happens. One thing I saw today, which um, was that Retribution is now mm-hmm. like exclusive to Raw, apparently. So you're not oh. going to see them attacking no one on SmackDown or anything Smackdown. else like that. Okay, okay. Um, and for me, the leader of Retribution is Dijakovic. And we know Dijakovic and Keith Lee's history. So mm. that could be something to pro- probably even raise the profile of Retribution that very Dijakovic very, very comes true. after Keith Lee. And of course, they're not going to have brilliant matches on the main I roster, th- if, if they're allowed to. <laughs> but, of course, of course, of course. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. If they're allowed to, will they even be able to have the same type of matches exactly. um, as they did on NXT? That, yeah, that is a good question. Um, if, you know... The rumours or the popular rumours are true of Dodger Colvick being in retribution and more than likely the you know, the leader. Mm. It would be interesting to have Dodger Colvick try to recruit Keith Lee. I that's think most the, likely yeah. that would happen. Yeah. Keith Lee would do the whole no, 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 and then boom, that's attack. when you know, oh. the the attack, the clash and all the rest of it would happen. I think that would be that would make sense. Yeah. Um Yeah. Done many times, but it, it would work. I think it would work for both of them. I think it would be great. Yeah. Going on to um, turn our attentions to All Elite Wrestling. Um, AEW have now reached. Um, I think it's a year now um, since you know they they started. And how how do you see AEW after a year have they have they done what they said they were going to do have they you know have they met the promises and any expectations and, and and things that we had from from the, from the start i think the the most important thing is they've given people another place to work and a, a lucrative place to work on tv um and now it's like we don't have to accept crappy creative or we don't have to accept just sitting here in the canteen and getting paid Mm -hmm. for you know we're not enjoying our jobs you Mm -hmm. know they've given this other option and for the most part i think it has worked for a first year Mm -hmm. of tv like i'm far i'm i I can't remember what like the inception of wcw was against wwf i was Mm -hmm. too young Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but for to kind of see this play out i think they've really done a a good job like it's not easy mm. for a lot of these men remember where they on other shows and things like that they would lose loads of like pre-recorded stuff that then gets you know aired live a lot of them aren't even used to like filming regular tv um they've learned all of this kind of stuff obviously they've brought mm. in tv execs and stuff like that but they've learned all of this mm. stuff right in front of us um still improving all the time there's little things within you know the actual uh wrestling side of things like we've spoken in the past about the women's division Mm -hmm. about how like the main event scene doesn't seem like fully fledged yet um Mm -hmm. you know just certain stories that have holes in them but you know we'll be lying if we didn't say that wwe have you know these and maybe other promotions have all these same issues as Mm -hmm. well so i think it's been a really strong start i mean they've they've beaten nxt in ratings i mean I'm, i'm not a ratings Care per se, mm-hmm. but um, yeah, they've beaten NXT in ratings most weeks since their inception. Um, I really think in the second year they need they need like a strong target to go after and um, really kick up into like the next gear. Mm-hmm. For myself, I think the first thing I think about when I think of a year of all elite wrestling, I think about a politician. Okay. Um, so I'm like, a politician will come along and be like, we're going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to change this, I'm going to change that, I'm going to do blah, 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 blah. And then you see those things kind of starting to happen. You see, you know, the, the work being done and, you know, those promises kind of come into the fore. And then after a long spell of time, you're like... <laughs> Doesn't you come to fruition. Do, didn't you say, um, what about... You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, but at the same time, I like to be a very fair, fair person. 
um, regardless of whether I like or dislike something, I try to look at things properly, balanced as, as possible. The one thing that AEW has shown us, and definitely shown me, is that this wrestling game is not easy. Mm-hmm. 100%. So, as much as they were saying, um, oh, we're going to have so-and-so, and we're going to have more sports um, type, you know, uh, thing. Yeah. The leaderboard and you know wins matter and the all that kind of stuff. Mm. Rankings matter, and even though Darby Allen went against John Moxley and Darby Allen was like yeah, fifth, fifth. <laughs> anyway, and they even made a thing of it as well. Anyway, um, we're gonna have this amazing diverse da, 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 blah blah. The women's division, uh, yeah, mm. okay, you know, and then you know talking about diversity, not many black stars or a push for those or you know, or we can argue those things because yeah. Scorpio Sky was part of the, the first Tag Team Champions. Yeah. Um, you know, Sonny Kiss is doing doing stuff. Um, it took a while. Nyla Rose is obviously once um, women's, women's champion as well. So those things can be argued. But at the same time, you know, um, it, it's not... It, it, it feels more tick box than it is, you know, natural. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, na- natural decisions and stuff. So... As you said, a lot of these people, a lot of these wrestlers, performers have not been on TV regularly. It's new to them as well. Mm-hmm. So everyone is learning. Absolutely everyone is learning from, from the back to the front. Everyone's learning. Um, even those you know, guys like Cody Rhodes who have been in WWE and he did his thing for how long and whatnot, but he's never been in this position that he's in yeah. now. Both an executive and a wrestler and making decisions and all that kind of stuff. Um, again, Kenny Omega, very similar, and, and and all these other people. So, you know, and then also as well. I mean, you've got to even think about this whole COVID thing as well. That's been against them. That's 100. that's storylines being messed up because certain people can't be there, or you know, what I mean, for for whether it be long term stuff or a week or two weeks. And you know, we saw with John Muxley, his his championship match had to get cancelled for two weeks and mm. you know we've not seen Neville because he's in the UK and can't travel to the US and all these different things so I, I guess we have to just be like AEW's done done enough yeah Um. so far so far they've, they've, they've done enough and as you said I think what definitely changes the game massively is being the other platform on TV with money, because there are others on TV that just don't really have the money to compete anywhere close to WWE at all. Um, and we talk about, you know, the clash on Wednesday night with NXT and AEW and AEW winning that most weeks. So I think they're they're, they're off to a fine. It's it's an okay start. I wouldn't say it's the best personally, but in the in in the light of fairness, they've done they've done well. They definitely have something to build on um they definitely have improvements to make um and i think there's a quite a few things that can be done almost straight away yeah 100 percent. women's division um the main event scene mm. mjf moxley is that you know the, the, the problem is everyone knows he's not winning that Moxley's not winning so I mean sorry that MJF is not winning so this is the thing I think I think Moxley has had obviously he's got to be taking on people every month or whatever you know to remain champion or whatever the case is he's got to defend the title the problem is because there's no main event scene we don't mm. believe the guys they're putting him up against we just <laughs> don't believe it like this guy this is this is true this is true we don't this believe is true, it. I mean, you, we, we've you know MJF. Yes, they've tried to build him um, as the guy to be, and he's been unbeaten for how long, and all that kind of stuff. And he's and he's great, and he's an amazing talker. Mm-hmm. It's just not believable. Him on the top is not. If it was for Cody's TNT, if that whole thing with Cody was happening now with the TNT Championship being the prize, all for it, it would probably exactly. be one of the best things on on the show, even in wrestling right now. But this thing with Moxley, it's not working. It's literally it's... because, yeah, he, he's won the most matches, so he's ranked mm-hmm. number one. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. ranking number one makes you the number one contender. But of course, are of you course. a believable champion to dethrone this guy? And that is the exact problem. Like, he hasn't actually had a build 
he's just had a build since he's got into this program with Moxley. Mm. Like he's just he's mm. just number one by default almost. Like, right, 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 right. Since yeah, since the Cody um, feud, he's not done anything to make me think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the yeah. Guy. You know what I mean? He's That's not exactly done it. anything. If it was. Um, What's his name? Lance Archer. If 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 it was him, right. it would make a little bit more sense <laughs> yeah. right now because he's he's walking in carrying people on his back <laughs> before a match is even starting. Like that's his thing. <laughs> Just finding people in the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll beat you up, bring you out, throw you on the floor, and I'll beat up the other guy in the ring. Come on, that's yeah. how you you know that's 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 a nice way to 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 build a monster in in, in that respect. Yeah. Um, the Brian Cage thing was kind of out of nowhere as well unfortunately mm. Brian Cage too early you know yeah Brian Cage in his look in his size in his ability is definitely good enough to beat Moxley and be seen as he's definitely a believable champion in that respect but with the way it happened it just didn't it just didn't really work it just unfortunately for him for Brian Cage it just came too early in Moxley's reign again yeah 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 so yeah 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 that's true obviously Darby Allen, Darby Allen. his wasn't so bad but it was again Maybe him being a face, maybe him being fifth on the list. On the list, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, they could have built that. They, I think that that could have been built. I don't f- see Darby Allen beating Moxley, but I think it still could have been a very, very good um, storyline um, and a way to build up that whole thing. So, yeah, AW still have um, improvements to make, but. You know, it's only it's only been a year. We can't we can't unfortunately we can't be too harsh. Yeah, yeah. Um on, on AEW. I guess what what makes us want to be so um so harsh in, in, in our in our evaluation is probably fans. Yeah. For me at least anyway, it would be what we call the marks. <laughs> um it would be AEW marks who see nothing wrong with what they're doing mm. um, and think that everything that they do is way better than everything that WWE could ever do and has ever done and, and all that type of thing yeah. and I see that way too often on social media in general so I'm, I I then look at it like yeah but it's not that good mm. but if I take away myself from all of that somehow um, and just look at it you know um, directly as you know a growing company I've, I think they're doing they're doing fine yeah. Um, they've got more than enough publicity, more than enough media attention, more than enough um, fans watching, and you know, what I mean, changing the game. So they've done well. They've done well. I, I guess one accolade that they've recently just obtained is um, John Moxley coming in number one for Wrestler of the Year. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know how that you know happens. No, if no, I'm no. honest, you know what? I, I get it. I get it completely. Um, I don't. I, I, <laughs> you, have to, you have to explain that one cause... I'll, I'll explain I'll explain it because for me the um, Pro Wrestling Illustrated 500 their criteria for me I can't argue it can't argue it at all I, I think it's you know what's the criteria could be so you're looking at things like you know um, obviously wins and losses how that person has influenced pro wrestling in general um, that person's that person's um What's the word that person's pull? You know, what I mean, all that kind of stuff, and also as well, then they're um, who they who they beaten and all this all this type of thing. Uh-huh. The problem comes with Moxley being named number one now because the last few months it hasn't been great for him at all. That's exactly. But it. when the 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 evaluation process is from um, I believe it's June last year to July sorry July last year to June this year okay so if you look at last year this time last year you can't he, argue it he was hot mm. he was the hottest thing in wrestling whether you liked him or not whether you agreed or not you could not deny it and it lasted for a very long time up until at least the end of last year yeah yeah so that alone <sighs> that alone makes it makes sense to me at least from july when he when he came on the scene i guess or yeah just before was it all out i can't remember when he whenever he attacked kenny omega from mm. then to when he won the title in what was it february this year mm. um he was really good 
obviously oh. his title oh. reign hasn't been the greatest mm -hmm. um and that's obviously what i guess i'm looking at it and many maybe many others are looking at it from of course of course of course i'm i'm a shield guy i love the shield i'm very happy mm -hmm. he's won it and it's kind of completed the trifecta of all the shield boys coming number one you know that's true um that's true. which is is brilliant but um mm -hmm. I just feel, I mean, when I look at it, in terms of a consistent run, if and mm -hmm. like, yeah, his, his July to Feb was really good, but in terms of a consistent run for the last year, mm -hmm. I can't see how Adam Cole didn't win. I, You know what? I would argue that only because, as well, with John Moxley, it wasn't just AEW, it was also New Japan as well. Yeah. And we all know how many people love New Japan and, you know, it's a very different um, yeah. thing match quality is the highest of the highest and if you're doing well in that yeah yeah these types of lists are made for you basically i i get you it I, mean? I get it so i get it it makes sense it, it's bad timing i think it's mm. just bad timing in, in in the sense of right now or the last few months muxley has not been yeah anything to talk to, to shout about at mm. all in my in my eyes at all um adam cole definitely was very hot I don't I don't know whether the Adam Cole hype was a little bit overrated or maybe or the or his his championship run lasted too long. There there are aspects of where some things fell flat. Like for instance, I remember mm -hmm. the um the Velveteen Dream car park thing that he done. They, they, I mean that's expected when you're doing a year long reign. There's not gonna yeah, be consistent thing. But I just feel like even okay and again this might be how you explained how the cutoff point is even with this last mm -hmm. thing with pat mcafee like the mm -hmm. quality mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. i think he's just been the most consistent and to be honest mm -hmm. like now you've explained it to me i understand it a bit better i'm less harsh on moxie taking number one adam cole got mm -hmm. number two after all like yeah, it's yeah, not like he was way amazing. down the list exactly for you know that's AEW, a new company and nxt which is supposed to be the feeder brand of wwe getting one and right, two right, like right it says everything but um right. yeah i i just feel like in terms of a consistent 12 months it probably would have been adam cole for me over moxley but that that makes sense that mm. that definitely makes sense the consistency level was definitely you know adam cole stayed there a lot longer than because moxley was yeah you know I mean? yeah up and down kind of thing um and in you know st staying on to this um pwi 500 as well we also saw a lot more diversity um, in the list. That's all. That's always been a bit uh, been an issue um, the last few years, or basically the whole time we've, we've had it. We've had it. Last last year's list had just over thirty to thirty five um, black stars in it. This year's list, I'm sure, is touching like seventy five. So time almost around. like a fifth of the entire list. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, obviously a. a you know a double in in what they had last year to, to this year and about half of those were completely new people that weren't on have never been on the list before um maybe missed out on the list last year maybe been in before but didn't wasn't on the list on the list last year so it's nice to see that we also had a few women yeah, in the list that's good yeah. um these women were in the list because they um have had had a good number of intergender matches as well so it wasn't just adding women to add women um because some of the names you know a lot of people probably wouldn't even know who, who some of these ladies are recognized yeah. um yeah 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 they're not recognizable in that respect unless you you know um like myself also follow the indie scene as well um or as best as you can so it was nice to see that um that happen i still think there's a lot Still, there's still a bit to be done in terms of that list in terms of you know representation mm -hmm. in the list but seeing that level of progression or that that amount of progression in in that one year um is you know is, is very encouraging i think that's the word i'll use is encouraging definitely definitely speaking of ladies um our next thing that we wanted to speak about this week was the women's division um, the women's tag team division specifically in WWE. Um, I know this was something that you wanted to speak about, so I'm going to let you kind of steer the ship with this one and I'll jump in with you on that. So, yeah, I think basically in the last couple of months, we've seen the title 
improved the way it's used and gone around um obviously we've had sasha and bailey that have recently just dropped it before mm. then it was um Kyrie and oscar before them alexa and um, nikki cross so I think the issue is that it's a few of the same names that is kind of going around. I think now okay. Sasha and Bailey, Nikki and Alexa are both like two time um tag team champions. Mm -hmm. Where else we've had um the Riot Squad, you know, before Sarah Logan left, never kind of really got a look in. Mm -hmm. Um I still think they possibly have something with Tamina and Nia Jax to do there. I know they're not together right now when Nia's currently a champion with uh, Shayna Baszler, but I think they, they need to circle around to that one right there because that is money as far as I'm concerned. Real quick. Real quick. Um, and they've just split up the Iconics. Now, are you trying to establish this division <laughs> or not? Like, I just, I just feel like like this, people so there's, there's conversations around should there be a women's mid card title but it's like mm, 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 mm. they can't even deal with what they have now sort of thing um i i personally i'm a fan of tag teams i don't like seeing people slap okay. together and banded together right. as right. a tag team um but if if you do it well if you band them together and make them look like a tag team in terms of packaging mm -hmm. i'll buy it it's fine but mm -mm -mm. Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax is an interesting one. I'm, I'm now kind of curious to see, it's looking like Mickey James, but who's going to take on Asuka at Class of Champions? Mm. I pro it probably should have been Shayna Baszler, if we're all honest with ourselves. Um, and yeah, it's just like, the Iconics thing has really frustrated me. Like, I think that, they, I mean, they would have been two-time tag team champions if they were to pick it up again. But I feel like you can't be disbanding teams when, you know, you're trying to build and establish this, this belt. Um, I feel as though the tag team championship, the women's tag team championship, is almost a casualty of, um, or a byproduct, shall we, of um, the women's evolution. So, with that said, you know we mentioned before um, in in previous episodes that the women's evolution has kind of been this thing where it was hot. Vince was like, "Okay, let me jump on it now that it's hot." Yeah. And then when it kind of ran its course in his mind, he was like, ah, all right, someone else to take over or, yeah, you know what I mean? And especially with what happened with the women's tag team championships the first time around when Sasha and Bailey won it and became the first champions and then what happened with them, they lost it within, you know, at, at the, at the first. or so, yeah. Yeah, 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 their, their first defence. Put it on the Iconics, which wasn't overly ridiculous. Um, mm -hmm. The Iconics are, you know, fully fledged duo, tag team, all that type of thing, and they were they they're good at what they do. But then after they put it on them, it kind of meant nothing. Yeah, they didn't then build on it after that and all that kind of thing. So that kind of killed the championship itself. It gained a little bit of resurgence when they put it on Alexa and Nikki, yeah. and I think that was massively to do with it being on Alexa. Yeah, hundred. We then saw it every single week. They love Alexa. Uh, <laughs> absolutely, bro. Because even before that, she was on TV, even though she was injured. She was injured. She yeah. was still on TV every single week, mm -hmm. whereas Sasha Banks was at home. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so <laughs> so you know, we we had that. We had the resurgence of the tag team, um, that women's tag team title, which was great. And I still think it is now. Mm. It's still running, you know, because even when the Kabuki Warriors had it. It was still there every single week, good. yeah, yeah. Which was, which was amazing. Which has then put Asuka where she is now. It's helped to put her where she is now, which is mm. great. Of of course, then we had Sasha and Bailey, who just took it to a next level. They just, you know, their last few months in wrestling is just, you know, a thing of dreams. For it to happen in this, for for it to happen in in this period of COVID, where everything seems to be not so great and blah blah, mm. blah absolutely phenomenal. That run has been for it to end how it has or not every, not not even how because the, the Shayna Baszler putting the submission on both girls that was, was brilliant was, <laughs> was amazing yeah but for it to be Shayna and Naya as you said a tag team that's been slapped to get and yeah. even the way that's been done is just it's dire yeah I, I, I saw their little was it on Smackdown I can't remember I think it was on Smackdown I saw their little their little no, it was on Raw last week. I saw their little thing where they met each other in the back, 
like they didn't have a massive brawl two weeks ago did, that went across the whole I think arena. they had a massive brawl that day and then later on they were like oh yeah well like my enemy my enemy is my friend my enemy is my friend and they slapped each other in the face or someone slapped someone in the face and they were like <laughs> yeah <laughs> no just no uh, just no um and that's not to say that a Shayna Nia Jax partnership cannot work mm. It's just been done lazily, if that's even a word. It's just been done very lazy, you know what I mean? Um, and then for them to win it, you know, I thought it would have maybe been an, a bit more of an established duo that they would could, take... They, they, they should have even done, like, not maybe not to win it, because it would have been maybe a bit too soon in their story, but I mm-hmm. say that Shane and Naya won it. Um, mm-hmm. Natalia and, and Lana. Lana. Oof. Like... Leave Shayna Asuka needs challenges. Like that's the other thing that we need to think of here. When you're coming and banding mm. up the thing, mm. you know, everyone just complained that Sasha and Banks Sasha and Banks. Sasha and <laughs> Bailey were holding, you know, all the titles. You know, mm. Shayna mm. Baszler is a, a pr- primarily a singles competitor, so she needs that title and not necessarily the tag team title. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I just don't <laughs> Again, again, we have to think of obviously the, the the usual psychology, the usual thing that happens with wrestlers. You know, they become tag team champions or an intercontinental champion, mid card champion before they hit you know the, the world championship. Yeah, yeah. Now I know, of course, we know Shayna as this badass um, from NXT, absolutely mm. amazing. Um, you know, I, I rate Shayna so much mainly because, for me personally, at first I didn't get it. I didn't like her. I, I thought, what what, what was? Oh, the really? Point? Seriously, straight away when she won the was it the Mayon Classic that she yeah, won? Yeah, came, or she came second. Up? She came second to Kyrie. Yeah. So I was just like, why is this woman even in the final? <laughs> but then, after she you know done her thing in NXT, I was like, okay, I completely get it, and I'm completely like falling in love with the whole, the whole persona, the whole you know everything about her. Yeah. So for then to see, you know, as you said, for her to to see her now as a tag team champion randomly you know um just doesn't make sense but at the same time she kind of maybe has to do that in order to i i don't know i don't think she should yeah but i'm just trying to see how they in might their be eyes. thinking of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 exactly that um and we all and we all know anyone that comes from nxt whatever you did in nxt doesn't necessarily mean anything. <laughs> Zero. It, it doesn't mean a damn thing. You know what I mean? Asuka came from being undefeated and then lost oh, to, to Charlotte. To Charlotte, yeah. You know what I mean? Like straight away. Oh. So, yeah. It, it is what it is. Um, hopefully it propels Shayna. On a personal level, I'm not too fussed about Nia Jax. If I'm completely honest. I've, mm-hmm. I've lost all hope and faith in in, in Nia Jax. Um, I was a massive fan. Well, not a massive fan, but I was a fan of hers um, you know the whole look and the whole what she represented and stuff mm. um, still like that but I just don't believe in her talent yeah myself um, for her to be propelled anywhere again or to any kind of champion, singles championship at, at, at all yeah, yeah so I'm just hoping she, it, you know it comes good for Shayna she did beat Bailey as well a few weeks yeah. back no, I think um, and things like that so we'll, we'll see how it works out it it then gives us now the room um, for Bailey Sasha to go at it. Um, Sasha did a very interesting thing when she was talking on the mic um, on SmackDown and said about revenge, and then looked at Bailey as she and said Bailey. it. And I I think she's done that before. She's done that before. She's kind of you know directed a line to Bailey, but wasn't talking to Bailey. If that makes sense. After so, after payback, Sasha tweeted out, "Well, I didn't tap out." Exactly. So we've seen all these things. We've seen all these little things happening, and and I've, again, that storyline, that whole storyline, has just played out brilliantly. Like so these these little things, like them losing to you know Shayna and Nia, mm. and Sasha not being able to defend her championship, are a little annoying. But again, on the whole, that whole Sasha Bailey thing has just been phenomenal. It's been the yeah. best thing. Of 2020, from completely mm-hmm. honest, nothing yeah, else has. comes even close mm. to to what's been happening with them. So that's been amazing. Um, we've got a few minutes to go, um, so let's get into the hardest part of our week: <laughs> <laughs> um, choosing our start of the week, finding one person 
Um, I think the hard part, I must say, the hard part isn't finding the person. The hard part is finding someone that we haven't mentioned already. Yeah, yeah. Because as we said, you know, um, Sasha was someone that you picked in the first week. You could pick her again. You could pick her every single week since. Yeah. Um, Apollo Crews, I mentioned him last week and he's done great. Um, Bobby Lashley is now the new um, US champion. United States champion. I mentioned him before as well. So enlighten me and surprise me with your pick this week. Well, this is a surprise. It's a surprise for myself as well. Um, <laughs> so we are recording this on Tuesday. Today is Super Tuesday for the NXT show that's right. going to be tonight. Right, right, right. And I'm gambling my star of the week on Finn Balor. Ooh! So is that your prediction for the win? He's my prediction for the win. Okay, he's going to okay, be my okay, star okay. of the week because he's okay. going to win. I think that <laughs> Finn Balor, like more than anyone in this match, and I can't wait for the match, the 60-minute Iron Man match is going to be brilliant. Mm, These are mm. guys that are the cornerstones of NXT, of for their sure. errors and stuff. For sure. Um, Finn Balor needs this, man. Finn Balor needs this. I think since they brought him to NXT, it was cool to see him down there. Cool to see this mm-hmm. little change of character to him. Mm-hmm. For the large part, he hasn't really done much, though. I know they wanted him to go to NXT UK, face Walter. That's when, you know, Corona kicked in. Um, so true. that kind of scrap, got scrapped. But um, mm-hmm. Finn Balor needs this. And I'm betting he's going to be my star of the week because... The, the, the performance won. like it has to come like he needs this like otherwise he might as well go back to main roster and just I don't know I don't know where they're going to put him because it looked mm-hmm. like they kind of even lost faith with him then like I don't know if you've noticed they have this thing of when they put the championship on you you get injured it's like they take their time to kind of give it to you again for whatever mm-hmm. reason mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Finn Bella has to win this man <laughs> he's my star of the week I'm you, gambling you're, you're all my right. chips are on him you're very right. He he needs it. Um, he definitely needs it, especially after not being involved in the North American um, ladder match. Yeah, you know he had a, he had a, you know the match with with Timothy Thatcher was was good, very different. Mm. Again, showed um, Finn Balor in a different light, as you mentioned last week. Um, yeah, he he needs it. Does he win it? I kind of see Tommaso Ciampa winning it. I, so I think that Finn, ba- I, I, well, I want and think Finn Balor's going to win it. I do mm-hmm. think that Champa is going to take it off him. Okay, and okay. then they're going to circle around to maybe Champa and Karrion Cross again when Karrion Cross is fit, as Karrion Cross basically squashed Champa when he arrived. Right, 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 um, right, right. That's my thought process. So I don't think Finn Balor's going to have a, a long reign or anything like that. Mm. But I think this specific match... Like it has to be him. Like it it's, has it's, to it, be. It, like. it, it really does, and it's a tough one because Champ is definitely going to be in the in the running. He's going to be in the picture, regardless of whether he's it's him that wins it tonight or not. It's out of him and Champa. I don't think it, the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think you know Gargano. No, um, Adam Cole. We've been there, and I don't think mm. they're doing it again for now. Yeah. Um, and I, I, it would feel way too soon as well. Um, in every in every way. Mm. Champa just makes sense. He more than likely he would have come back and you know come after Cross straight away because you know he was the one that put him on the shelf. Mm. But for that reason, that's why I think it will be Champa. But at the same time, I want it to be Finn because he needs it. it like he said, um, <laughs> he came back and he done his whole Prince thing and his you know DDT people on the on the on the, on the outside and all <laughs> the outside. Kind of stuff. Mm. And I'm just like, yeah, man, they're putting it back on him. He's going to propel NXT again and he's going to be the guy. Almost a year later, he yeah. really actually hasn't done anything. Yeah, not much Hasn't at done all. anything. Um, yeah, he needs it. That's not a bad pick for the week at all, given, given it's, it's the, a pr- the It's a premonition. It's, <laughs> it's a premonition. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm, 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 sure, I'm sure things are going to fall into place. So our, so our star of the week is a prediction. Yes, you know, I mean, <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, mine is has, is no reflection on the week. It's mm. no reflection on the week, um, or very little, very very little reflection on the week. Should I say? Mine is Kofi Kingston. Okay. <laughs> it is You've random. been off TV for a while, it but go on. I know, I know, I know, I know. But the reason why is because. Um, it does still relate to this week because of the PWI 500. Mm-hmm. He was the, the, the highest ranking black star on that list. Um, 
and still within the top 10 I think it was 6 that he came oh that's brilliant or was it a little higher I can't remember now um, but he was in the top 10 and obviously of course that you know um, and then also with Big E um, mentioning Kofi as well on Talking Smack and the amount of publicity that gained um, mm. via Twitter and on social media and you know and stuff like that I still think Kofi Kingston is still very much relevant um, for, for this week as much as he's yeah. been off TV for a few a good few weeks a couple of months now um, so what Big E was talking about as well was you know the whole thing of Kofi having to wait and then it being him being squashed uh, by Brock Lesnar within nine seconds and we found out via um, I forget the name and I'm going to kick myself for forgetting his name but a guy who was um, part of the creative yes, during that time I did see that yeah. he's then you know commented on Twitter saying that Kofi being squashed by Brock Lesnar was the plan from day one. Shocking. Shocking. Not shocking, but shocking at the same yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we talk about the you know what Kofi did and it changed the landscape. Um, those few those few weeks, the run up to um, WrestleMania last year, WrestleMania thirty five, um, was just Kofi Mania was running wild. See, yeah, we probably won't see for you know for a very very long time from anyone else. Mm-hmm. The last time we came anything close to that was Daniel Bryan five years before, yeah, and it yeah. was Daniel Bryan that he beat as well, which you know makes the story even greater. But to then find out that you know um, this whole thing with Brock and I, we knew that Brock was going to take it from him or Roman Reigns, possibly mm-hmm. even Randy Orton at a point as well, we're going to take it from him by SummerSlam or straight after or whatever it was. So it wasn't a loss. Obviously, it's, it was just the it's way. The it happened. Manner. It's the manner. It's the manner of how it happened. For, for sure, definitely the manner. Um, not who was not because he lost. Um, because I think that even his run was very long, a lot longer mm. than we expected it to be, which yeah, was six, great. Six, six, seven months or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess for me, choosing Kofi this week is more kind of to reiterate what um, Big E was saying, and to also reiterate the respect that. I have for for Kofi, okay. um, you know, for that run. You can, you know, there's arguments about whether it was great or not because of the um, the people that he faced were, you know, as much as they were former champions at the time, or you know, even still now with most of them, they were regarded as mid card, mm-hmm. and you know, some people argued that. But for me, on paper, when we look back in the history books, you're gonna see Kofi Kingston beat Seth Rollins, AJ Styles, Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Kevin Owens, Samoa Joe, and Randy Orton. Yeah, they're, they're, they're names. I'm not arguing. I'm yeah. not arguing with no one on that one. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that's of course. that's 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 amazing. And then also as well, he's won. You know, he's a Grand Slam champion and all the rest of it. So, mm. you know, Kofi Kingston gets my shout um, because of his placement in in the PWI 500 and Big E. You know, um, making a shout and you know, shouting out Kofi Kingston. Basically, hundred. So, just about, just about makes sense <laughs> for star of the week. Um, so yeah, man, that's that's been our, our show for this week. Um, you can catch us on YouTube, the fully fledged, beautiful looking, um, you know, post post show, <laughs> um, done by Mex himself. Always a great job. Um, also as well now I can actually officially announce that you will be able to hear this show and shows from now um, on the new UK gospel radio station called Affinity Extra this is why it's called Wrestle Extra if you didn't clap that already Mm -hmm. Um, it will it will be shown it will be played sorry on Thursday noon that's Thursday noon GMT so that's Thursday noon in the UK you guys have to work out whatever time that is for you guys in the US <laughs> and wherever else you are in the world. Um, that's too much math for me. It's like about five hours ahead of you lot. That's all I know. Um, <laughs> you lot work it out. But I'll, I'll be posting that, you know, on, on my page so you'll be able to see exactly what that is, what it's about um, and all the rest of it. I actually have 28 seconds remaining on the IG Live. Hi, everyone, IG Live. I don't usually um, acknowledge you, but hi. Thanks for being here. Um, and you can follow us, um, WrestleMania UK, on everything, including The Dark Place called Twitter and um, Black Wrestling Alliance, as you already follow me already on IG. 
and Black Wrestling A on um, on Twitter. Guys, another week. We're done. We're dusted. Yep. I'm going to rest. I need to sleep. <laughs> Mex, thanks a lot. And we'll see you next week, people. See, take see care. See you guys later.